In today's video, we're gonna react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Do you remember when Queen Elizabeth died and they broke her wand ceremoniously in the, in the funeral and they laid it on top of her coffin? What many don't know is that there's leaked audio or audio that came out while they were taking her, her body to there. And there was a mic or something on that caught feedback or caught somebody else speaking, not just the British commentators. And it said her death was irreversible. She's trapped. And I'm going to show you that audio right now. Now, if you noticed, the guy who was speaking, he was going to speak, and then he, he heard that other person speak, and he stopped. And after that other person realized that they were live on mic, they stopped. And then a few seconds later, he speaks. And nobody really knows what that means. I'm not making this up. You can go find that audio. It's still available out there. It's publicly available. And this is just the opinions of a content creator discussing with other content creators what they might think. I have no idea if this is real or not. But as an opinion, a walking opinion that I'm just throwing out there, there's a lot of rituals and ceremonies that are produced. And when they say her death is irreversible, she's trapped. I'm just throwing an opinion out there that that can mean that the body's done and that her spirit, her soul is trapped wherever she is. They're able to transfer consciousness. Transhumanism is huge. It's a big thing that they're trying to, the elites, the people, the one percenter are trying to push forward. An ability to eliminate death so they can transfer their mind and consciousness in either a younger body or something more rejuvenated, a machine, an android, a cyborg, whatever have you. Unfortunately, they got caught on the hot mic saying these things. And people that know, if you know, you know, you know more or less what they're talking about. But again, this is just an opinion for entertainment purposes. Now, I looked up to see if I could find that audio recording. I could not find it. If it's out there and it's uh, available, that's actually true to what this guy's saying, I could not find the audio clip. So if anyone is familiar where I can find it, let me know because I would like to listen to it just to hear if it's authentic or not. If that is an actual audio clip, that is kind of mysterious as what were they talking about exactly? If you're not ready for a mind f then keep scrolling because it's about to get a little bit out there. There's this theory in quantum physics that says we might all actually be immortal. Hear me out. You know Schrodinger's cat where there's a cat in the box with a vat of poison and until someone opens the box, the cat is both alive and dead in a state of quantum superposition. Well, in 1957, Hugh Everett proposed the many worlds interpretation where in this case, once you open the box, there's a timeline where the cat lives and a timeline where the cat dies, but they don't split until the box is open. This would mean there is an infinite amount of realities for branching off every single day into a multiverse. And then there's you. Have you ever walked down the street and felt like you almost got hit by a car? Well, quantum immortality says that there's a good chance in one timeline you did, but every time you get knocked off, your consciousness immediately travels into a timeline where you didn't. This continues on and on for infinity with your conscious mind always finding a way into a timeline where you made it. I don't know if I necessarily believe it, I would like to believe it, but it also makes me think that if this is a real subject, if this is a real theory, then that means somewhere out there, someone's going to learn how to utilize that power so that they can practically live forever in each timeline and be extremely aware of each timeline or each reality that they jump to. I could see that happening in the future if we can control this. We have an interesting sighting coming out of Amarillo, Texas. This was captured around July 19th. 2024. The witness was driving down the highway when he records something falling out of the sky. Now, this can easily be explained as space debris or just unidentified objects falling down. Um, I would like to make note of his comments. He stated that he watched it for a long time fall and then it disappeared. So it doesn't look like it hit the ground, which potentially means it could have burned up and disintegrated. But it's interesting that it got down so low in our atmosphere that we could actually physically see it. And where, where did the pieces go? <laughs> Take a look at this. Let me know if anybody near the area saw the same object or have videos of their own. Comment and tell me what you think.
I mean, honestly, there's no telling what that could be. It could be a satellite going down, it could be a plane going down. I would think that there would be more of a fire trail if it was like a plane. It could have been something that is falling from space like a satellite and it just disintegrated. An astronaut caught proof of sprites in the atmosphere. And there's also ghosts, trolls, elves, gnomes, jellyfish, and pixies up there. Not kidding. Just Google it. On June 3rd, Matthew Dominic, the commander of the SpaceX Crew 8 mission, while on the ISS, took a picture of a mysterious light suspended in space. They are aliens. They're called the Red Sprites. They form above thunderclouds in the upper part of the atmosphere, the mesosphere. These branching red flares are a form of weather event known as transient luminous events and can occur with strong thunderstorms. They're not like your regular lightning that goes down into the ground. Red sprites shoot up into the atmosphere. Some sprites can be up to 30 miles across. Red sprites are one type of visible manifestation of electrical discharges that occur at an altitude of 35 to 50 miles, far above the top of active thunderstorms or other strongly electrified clouds, which produce lightning strokes. Red sprites do not appear very frequently because very strong lightning strokes capable of producing them don't occur very often. Other types of TLE include blue jets, elves, halos, ghosts, trolls, gigantic jets, gnomes, and pixies. These are all short-lived optical phenomena that happen above thunderstorms in the upper atmosphere. Man, those red sprites are really cool looking. I'm not going to lie, if I would have seen those as like a teenager, I would have probably thought that those were aliens or angels or something. Th they look extremely otherworldly. And props to the person that caught those on camera because those are some really good shots. You guys want to hear an alien story? Please. It happened in 1961 and it was this man named Joe Simonton, a chicken farmer in Eagle River, Wisconsin. He was sitting in his kitchen eating a vital lunch, he said. And then all of a sudden, he says what he describes as silver bowls float down into his yard, not a sound. And he immediately ran outside. And he said this hatch opened. There's a little man inside of it, probably about five foot tall. And he's holding a container and he was gesturing like water. Yeah. And then he walked up to the man, grabbed the container, filled it up with water and noticed that they were cooking something in the ship. He said it looked like they were cooking like pancakes. Cakes. What? And so he said, gestured like, can I have one? They gave it to him. And then the said this little man, like, thank you. Mm -hmm. And he said they closed the hatch and said it lifted up, went at a 45 degree angle and then shot off and was gone over the horizon in two seconds. What in the world? This is the crazy thing. A university also tested the pancake and it was wheat that is only found in like Europe. Could you imagine going around telling people that you were given a pancake from aliens? And I mean, to take it to the point where it actually got tested and it was found out that this was from Europe, like a wheat from Europe. I can't imagine someone would just fabricate that story. Well, would they have a pancake from Europe delivered to them and they're like, you know what? I'm going to make a story about aliens making these pancakes. Did she give birth to the devil that day? One stormy night in 1735, Jane Leeds, known as Mother Leeds, entered labor for her 13th child. A child that she had cursed, declaring it would be the devil. The child was born normally, except it transformed into an abomination. The Jersey Devil, also known as the Leeds Devil, is a creature that lives in the forest of the Pine Barrens in South Jersey. There are many variations, but it is usually described as a bipedal, kangaroo-like, or wyvern-like being with a horse or goat head, leathery bat wings, horns, small clawed arms, legs with cloven hoofs, and a forked or pointed tail, known for moving quickly and emitting a high-pitched, terrifying scream. Was it Mother Leeds' 13th child that, after giving birth to it, transformed into this creature? Was she actually a witch, and the child's father was the devil himself? Or is the Jersey Devil a guardian of buried treasure within the Pine Barrens? The Treasure of Pirate Captain Kidd. Skeptics believe the Jersey Devil is just a figment of early settlers' imaginations. Another egregoric being manifested from the collective consciousness. Just another entity to add to the Pine Barrens pantheon, known for its supernatural creatures and ghost stories. It's crazy to me that a lot of different states, a lot of different areas have their own version of some kind of monster or some kind of flying creature like this kind of reminds me of the Mothman a little bit, and it makes me wonder, if these creatures are real, 
Who's to say that they're either not government experiments that just escaped a long time ago, or maybe they're aliens. They're actually aliens that crashed and they're just lost here now, stuck on this planet. And that goes for any of the cryptid creatures. When you talk about Bigfoot, Bigfoot's just an alien creature that crash landed on this planet and just has been hiding in the woods ever since. Same thing goes for the Yeti, Loch Ness Monster, the Swamp Man. All of these cryptids are actually aliens. That's a pretty fun theory. It might actually make a good book series if put together well. The football is? I do. Which do you want to describe it? The football is the emergen also known as the emergency satchel. It's this leather bag that is always with the president. Any photograph you look at the president, if you can see around him, you will see the mill aide, the military aide, who is the person assigned to carry the football. 24-7, 365 with the president. Inside the football are two key items. One is an ability for the president's identity to be confirmed with and by those in the nuclear bunker beneath the Pentagon, which is called the National Military Command Center. So the president has like a, a laminated card inside his wallet known as the biscuit. It has information on it, which matches up to the information in the football that is a, literally a call and response. It is a verbal call response. This is not digital. This is not biometric. It's old school. And the other important item in the football is the black book. That's not its official name, but that's what it's called. What is in the black book? I would also like to know what's in the black book. Could you imagine going around saying, hey, yeah, I need you to grab the football and get me my biscuit. <laughs> what? When you're sleeping on your bed or whatever it may be, it should be made out of wood. And then you should use natural materials like wool. You can use cashmere, linen, kapok. Those would be the ones that I would say to use. You can use hemp if you can find it. And then if you have sheets, you want to make sure that your sheets are made out of linen so that they do not gather a static charge while you're sleeping. Right? I always talk about that one. Everybody with restless leg syndrome, that can be easily fixed overnight with linen sheets. Simple. Nice and simple. Your bed is a frequency, right? Your sheets are a frequency. If you can see those, they're linen. Linen is such a beautiful healing frequency. There's so much light that comes off of linen. So while we sleep, if we sleep in linen, right? Just showing this. If you sleep with linen, you're sleeping in the light healing frequencies which are being emitted from the beautiful fabric the entire time. The other cool part about linen is that it stays very cool. And I'm getting really hot because it's, <laughs> it's 100 out, but this is uh, organic cotton. With this situation with the linen, it stays very cool. I do like linen sheets. They do stay extremely cool. I didn't think about the static discharge though, and I do kind of have restless leg syndrome. Even right now, I'm bouncing my legs everywhere. What do you guys think about this theory? What type of sheets do you use? Do you have a preferred sheet for a specific reason? Or do you guys even have any recommendations for good sheets that stay cool, easy to clean, and feel nice? Let me know in the comments. Well, well, well. It looks like we've solved the mystery of the Antarctica blood falls. It turns out that it actually is blood. Now it took them a hundred years to figure out that the Taylor Glacier gets its red color from nanospheres of iron that is deposited into the water. And once that iron hits the oxygen, it turns red. And then in the article, they go on to say that the ancient microbes were a hundredth of the size of human red blood cells. Now, I think it was pretty weird that they used the red blood cell example to describe the size of the iron deposits. It looks to me as if this is another example of the truth being set in plain sight. The blood falls arise when the ice over the subglacial ecosystem over here melts. Now here's what I think. I think that the subglacial ecosystem is a part of the deceased leviathan that people have been talking about all over TikTok and have been showing on Google Earth. I think that there was a giant beast that died underneath or just on top of Antarctica and then once it froze over it held all that blood in place. And just in case you forgot, the reason why blood turns red is because the iron meets the oxygen and combines to form a red color. So whatever creature those blood falls were made out of, it had to have been huge. Perhaps it was made by the Leviathan, and maybe that creature isn't guarding this gate anymore. Or maybe it was another one of the creatures that is supposed to be in between these other ice wall gates. 
And, you know, there's also the, that anomaly in the Atlantic Ocean. I think that has something to do with all this information that has been coming out lately as well. When it comes to the Leviathan, I can't really speak too much on the blood falls. It's extremely crazy looking because it does look like someone pierced the snow with a spear and it just started bleeding. I will say though that I'm not a big believer in that Leviathan image where they show it on Google Earth and it just looks like the head of a serpent. I truly feel like if that was a real creature, the government or some kind of secret service would cover that up like they do everything else on Google Earth. So I really do not believe that to be a true authentic Leviathan or a large creature. I think it's just land mass that's just formed to look like a serpent head. Let me know what you guys think of this. Do you guys actually think that the blood falls are blood coming from a large creature or what do you think it is exactly? I truly believe that it is the iron salts that are seeping out like the like this article is talking about, but I could be wrong. This is weird and I have no idea what these bugs are. I've never seen something like this. These two women find these weird looking insects on their car and have no idea where they came from what they are. So if you know what they are, please let the rest of us know. And why have we never seen this, seen them before in the United States? Makes me wonder if this is an invasive species or a new species. Take a look and tell me what you think. What are these? I don't know. I saw one over there. Yeah, it's looking at me. I don't want it. I do believe those to be lantern flies. I'm not 100% certain, but I do think that that's what those are. There's this new concept that's arising amongst younger people. It's called time blindness. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time? They actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time when there's other solutions that we can look to. I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that. Yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. HR consultant here. And if you're an employee who's often late and struggles with being on time, you may be able to get an accommodation for that. And managers, you should be careful before just disciplining someone who's late. For employees who are late to work or struggle to be on time for things like meetings, if the reason they are struggling to be on time is related to a medical condition like ADHD or autism or something else, the ADA law applies. Wow, that's, that's kind of a new one to me. When I used to work at this one job, people had a really hard time with coming to work on time. It would always be sorry, the time just slipped past me, I, I wasn't aware of what time it was. But they never, ever, ever had a problem with leaving on time. When they were at the job, they knew what time it was when it was time to leave. Time did not slip by, you know? I just find it really crazy that it's actually come down to where it could be a medical condition. I would have never have thought of that in the past. I kind of understand it now, especially with like severe ADHD, autism. This actually proves that not all birds are real after all. He's talking. What the heck? Now, for a while, there have been multiple conspiracy theories on birds being fake, and even though that's not the case with all of them, in reality, this is just how the government keeps tabs on you. I know. It's not back into it, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, we gotta go, guys. Oh. <laughs> Careful, Mom. Okay, yeah, I was scared of him. Dude, get out of here. Well, honestly, it's not like a broken action figure. I have a lot of mockingbirds and different kinds of birds around my area, but none of them can speak like that. Do you guys believe in birds actually being spies? My grandfather, I don't know if he was ever joking about it, but he said that the company that he retired from sent birds to spy on him, and that was a long time ago, so. 
I think people are really serious when they say this. So in Miami International Airport, people were walking by and out of nowhere, the pipes bursted and this green fluid just started pouring out of the pipes, y'all. Have y'all, what is this? Do y'all know what this is? Oh my God, look at the airport. What happened? Bro, y'all seeing this? Remember just a few months ago, something like this started happening in New York City? And ironically enough, this happened right above the restrooms. Yeah, but a few months ago, this started happening in New York City. Like the green, the green liquid started oozing out of the, the manholes though. But this is happening in the airport. Yeah, if anybody knows what this is, please let us know down in the comments below because this is... I have not a single clue and people probably need to stay away from it. It looks dangerous. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed these clips, links are in the description down below. I'm sorry this episode was a little short today. I'm still trying to get things situated, getting my office set up. So I'm trying to dedicate my time to getting this set up for when I do upload videos. And thanks for stopping by my live Sunday. I really appreciate all the help, all the feedback that you guys gave. It was a really awesome time. I'm hopeful to do more of those in the future with an actual scheduled time, maybe every Sunday or something like that. Leave a comment on what you guys think or what time would be the best time to upload. That was really fun. I didn't really do much reacting to TikToks because I was just trying to get everything situated. So hopefully the next time it'll be a little bit more set up for reacting to TikToks live, talking to you guys. Sorry. Talking to you guys and, uh, you know, having a good time. I, I feel like a lot of people are just there to chill and chat and get to know each other. It's, it's really fun. So let me know in the comments when is the best time for you to watch a live stream or if you even think that I should do it in the first place. So with that being said, have a good day.